Hello everyone, Thijs here again and this time with another video for you. The last video that I made, we talked already about a little bit of the new Rastakan Rumble, the new expansion that is coming to Hearthstone. Now all the cards have been revealed and so we have a very good look at what the expansion is about to be. And to give a little bit even more my thoughts about it, I will give you my top 10 of the expansion. The 10 cards that I think will be the most impactful in the new expansion, Rastakan's Rumble. To take a little bit of a look, let's just go straight to the first card that I want to talk about. I start here at the card that I will rate at the, the 10. Here it is, Janurai the Dragonhawk. This card is a little bit of a bonus pick for me because I'm a very, very big fan of the card. I'm just very happy that Janurai the Dragonhawk, just not himself, but is also bringing back one of the, the oldest gods of Hearthstone, Ragnaros the Fire Lord. Ragnaros the Fire Lord has always been uh, one of my favorite cards for two years till he rotated out. Um, and now he is back a little bit in a different way. Uh, let's just talk about the card here. General Light of Dragonhawk, a 7 mana 4 for Beast itself as well. Uh, Battle Cry, if your hero power dealt 8 damage this game, summon Ragnaros the Fire Lord. So really looking towards a more hero power based mage deck. We have seen quite a lot of support as well to hero power mage decks in general. And this might be the bomb that the deck needs to really become an archetype. Janali, if you deal 8 damage, 8 damage for a mage. Mage is one of the best hero powers, so dealing 8 damage with a hero power is definitely possible. And what is the great thing about this card is it can also fit in the odd mage. With an odd mage, you already deal 2 damage with your hero power, so making this card very strong. Very looking forward to this card. It's one of my favorites of the set, and I, I won't stop till I make this card viable. So I put some high hopes in this card here as well. Number 9, Serenite Taskmaster. Not really looking the, like the most flashy card maybe, uh, being a one mana card, neutral card. But I think it's one of the cards that we should definitely not uh, just forget. It might be a little bit of the sleeper of the set in my opinion. A one mana, two, three. Death Rattle, summon a zero three agent for with Taunt for your opponent. So why I think this card is so good, in a way it reminds me really on the Zombie Child, what used to be the best one drop uh, for a long, long time for defensive decks. What I like so much about this card, it is, uh, it is so, it can be a card for mid-range and maybe even control decks, but maybe even for aggro decks, where you can just use your tempo so well. A 1 mana 2-3 is just a power creep for 1 mana. And because it is not a battle cry that you summon a 0-3 agent, your opponent has to trade it off at first. When it is turn 3 and turn 4, or maybe even turn 2, when these cards get traded, yes, you have to get rid of the free agent. But I think the investment of the card, it being a neutral card, so also be accessible to every class, being accessible to a lot of Baku decks as well. Uh, I think make this card very good. It's definitely on my uh, radar that I think this will be... One of the, the most played cards in the new expansion, as it is also a neutral card. Number 8 here is a druid spell uh, named Pounch. Zero mana, give your hero plus two attack this turn. Doesn't look maybe like the flashiest either, but a zero mana card with, uh, just for the druid can make some very strong combos possible. Um, I really see this card as a comparable card towards Backstep. Backstep is a 0 mana row card that deals 2 damage uh, to, a, to an undamaged minion being one of the best anti-aggro tools in Hearthstone. And I think this card just very fits the same spot as Backstep. And cards like that are just very good. 0 mana cards are always in danger. Where 0 mana cards can just swing so much tempo around. And I think this card is just good enough to do that. With it being 2 attack, you can trade off a lot of minions yourself at turn 1, turn 2, but still make your wild growth play, still make your draw play. Also, of course, fits very well with all the great draw that Drew ha Druid has with Nourish and with um, Ultimate Infestation. So, I don't really see this card as a hero power Druid, where maybe a lot of people will first think of that in this new expansion. Uh, but uh, this card is definitely, I think, a very strong card that uh, will probably be played in uh, here and there some Druid decks. Up next is a warrior card, and well, a warrior legendary. Little bit of a pick that I have high hopes for, that I really hope can be as good. I'm definitely convinced this card is quite good, but if it is gonna make it, like to the, to the number 7 where we are now, I am not sure, but I have really high hopes for this one as well. Uh, it's a 4 mana 4 tree, battle cry, copy all dragons in your hand. Where I don't think the battle cry is maybe necessarily like the best 
if there is a class where this battle cry called work, it is Warrior. Warrior can definitely deal a lot with early games and uh, late game uh, tools, so it doesn't really get rushed down. And 4 mana 4 3, copy all dragons in your hand. If you just have 2 dragons, it's a 4 mana 4 3, draw 2. So already that a little bit in mind, and of course, like it's such a great value bump in a way that you don't draw them, but you copy them, so it doesn't really access your card draw. But always it's a little bit of a thing uh, in Warrior because you need the Warrior is a class that very often might go to thirty cards, and with the Warful Master, I just think it's so great because you can just play it at turn four, and all the strong dragons that are coming out in this expansion are all kind of five mana for uh, for the Warrior. Maybe even a little bit later as the 8 mana. But they are all not coming really out before. And if you just have a little bit of an anti-aggro hand uh, at the start. You can just play this at turn 4. You don't have any risk on it. It's not that bad of a stat line that you have to invest. And then the reward is just there. So Warp Room here for my number 7. Number 6 is the Spring Paw. It is a 1 mana a Hunter card. A 1 mana 1-1. One, one. Rush, better cry at the 1-1 one, one links with Rush to your hand, also a beast. A great card, amazing card. A card that the Hunter has been looking for for a long, long time to get like another maybe very good one drop beast card. Springpot just does a lot in a lot of Hunter decks uh, that are currently around. Like it's a card that probably I think will play it in a lot of decks. You can play it in mid-range hunter. You can play it in an, more of a beast hunter. You can even play it in quest hunter. Maybe we will even see it in death rattle hunter. What I like about this card is it's a one mana one on rush. You can trade things away in a great combination also with hunter's mark or just deal that one damage that hunter is not always so great with. You have candle shot, but that's where you are limited to. And it also adds another one one links to your hand. So it's another one that you gain. It's quite a great value card in that way for just one mana. Hunter can do a lot of combos as well to the one one. Uh, you, you can give them adepts that you might get poison. And if you can make one one rush with poison, well, then it's just an assassinate for one mana. So there's a lot of potential with that. With that. We have the Toxmonger as well that does that in the same way. Activates a lot of cards for the Hunter, what I think can make it also very great. So I think Spring Pro is uh, it's going to be a very, very strong card for a lot of the Hunter decks. And here, fifth, Zandari Templar. A Paladin card towards the Heal Paladin archetype that we have seen a lot of cards in towards this expansion. 4-4 four, four mana, 4-4 four, four Battlecry. If you have restored 10 health this game, click game plus 4 plus 4 and taunt. When this card came out, it came out as one of the first Paladin cards. I wasn't very sure with this card. When I now have seen all the other Paladin cards, I really like this card. Paladin is getting a lot of tools that can restore health, that gain health, but also in a good way that you uh, cycle a little bit towards your deck, don't really damage you much, so it's a very good investment. Paladin already having also great healing tools with True Silver Champion, of course, it has some of the best healing cards. Later there will be a card also coming that might even show you why I have even more faith into this card. We'll keep that a little bit for a secret now. But uh, in general, healing in Paladin is uh, is very easy. The biggest problem for Paladin is always like, how do you uh, adjust your healing? What is great about this card is, if you heal a minion, it also counts towards the 10 health. And I think this card is just there to be a power creep, as it can just become a four mana 8 8 taunt. But I think it's a very big power swing and something that Heal Paladin needs. It needs some like win condition cards and a 4 mana 8 8 with taunt can definitely get there. I think this card definitely makes a possible Heal Paladin uh, viable. Just uh, we also have seen like a Flash of Light card but already restores for health draw a card. So we also have seen the Cycle cards for Paladin. Well, it's just a 2 mana card. I think these cards can fit great with the Zandari. And I, uh, I think Heal Paladin, I have high hopes for Heal Paladin. Number four is the Spirit of the Rhino. Every class is getting their own spirits. Spirits are some of the hardest cards for me at the rate at, uh, to rate at the moment. The problem that can appeal with spirits is as well that there are a lot of counter cards coming in the meta. It's a 0-3 minion. People can just void ripper it away. They can mossy it away. They can go ball it away. There are so many ways that uh, spirits might have their own weakness. So I'm a little bit... I'm a little bit pushing back too much on the spirits, but this one is the best spirit for me in the game. Spirit of the Rhino. It's one of the one mana spirits. A lot of the spirits are either one, two, three, or four mana. Uh, being in a one mana 
spirit makes it for me like already way more appealing as it isn't every one mana every spirit is a zero three so you have to make a little bit of an investment this one stealth for one turn your rush minions are immune the turn they are summoned one mana zero three uh in a warrior is i mean it's maybe not the best headline but what the great effect is is the effect that you're getting for the one mana that you play your rush minions are immune we are getting quite some more rush minions in this expansion actually quite a lot also some specifically for warrior and being immune with rush is a very strong mechanic suddenly way more aggressive cards uh, that have a high aggressive line with a lot of attack can suddenly uh, get played maybe because they get immune but one of the weaknesses of rush is of course that the stat line cannot be too good because then the mechanic becomes way too strong uh, but now with this immune i think there is a lot of a lot of things more possible what is also so great about this card is it's it's only one mana so even it has already still for the, the one turn so every time you play you know you have one turn where you can use uh, your rush mechanic as an immune with it being stealth afterwards it still has to get removed because it has it's it still needs to get traded and you still need to deal three damage in this card so it has like some surviving potential in my opinion as well might be very good in a more mid-range warrior i think there might be some additional tools now where a mid-range dragon warrior might appear and then spirit of the rhino is one of the very nice cards to play uh, very cheap and uh, probably putting like a lot of additional value in that archetype what i think it might need up to the top three we go now and number three for me here is mojo master z he six mana five five battle cry such each player each player to five mana crystals well guys if you anytime lost to a druid that wanted to play ui on his uh, turn six or seven if you are really lost to the shadow shaman and he wants to play his shadow now we have the cards to deny that six mana to set the mana crystals to five every late game combo card that uh, is available in mainly druid priest shaman we have a card now that can deny it and how good can it feel guys when a druid you see him ramping up with his wild girl with his norse going to the 10 mana but then right in time you can play the mojo master cd so and a very great, very cool card. Really, it reminds me a little bit on when Guys was revealed because I think it fits like a very similar spot of being a six mana tech card. Obviously, this is not a card that necessarily makes like a deck super good, but it it covers the weaknesses of decks. A lot of mid range decks mainly they have a big problem dealing with these big combo decks, very defensive decks. Um, Mojo Master Zihi might just be able to now give them so much room. Uh, your opponent then uh, starts to go to 6 mana again. Then he goes to 7 mana. So it takes a lot of time to refill for the more uh, late game base decks. And you can also of course play the card a little bit smart. Where you first play like a 4 mana card. Then this 6 mana card. Then you reset the mana. And so you, you still abuse a little bit of that power. I feel like we get a little bit of a low tap uh, back here in Hearthstone. Low tap was has been one of the best Hearthstone cards ever. I don't think it's like on the power level of low tap, but I am very excited for this card. It's a card that you really, really gonna feel very good when you also play him. It's an uh, it's gonna be if the meta is also very late game and combo oriented. Mid range decks are all gonna run Motor Master C. Number two. Hi. Priest Takal, and how awesome is it that I can talk about this card now, guys, after revealing it myself. I had the honor to reveal this card, but that's been an amazing honor. It was hard to keep the card secret for two weeks, but here he is. 3 mana, 3, 4, Battle Cry confirmed all but one of your hero's health into Armor. What that means is um, you play the card when you have full lives on turn 3. That will mean your hero uh, goes to 1 life and 29 armor. Do you play it with like 15 lives? You go to 1 health and 14 armor, etc. That's how it works. But what a card here for the Paladin. And what a card that the heal Paladin loves. The 3 mana 3 for stat line, of course, and very nice as well. But what has been the biggest issue always for the heal Paladin is that it's it often in control matchups, it cool. It had so many heal cards, but there was nothing to heal. It just felt hard to damage yourself to maybe even activate some cards. But now, high priest to call, it makes you that you can go above 30 lives. 
suddenly when you play against combo decks, you can more, make more than 30 lives. You can go to 45 or even 59 lives in total. Gives you so much more reach because Paladin has to heal, but it's called never, never go above 30 health. And now it can. Of course, we talked about, uh, about this already a little bit earlier. If you combine this card with the Zaldarive Templar, you use your, you play the High Priest to call, you try to heal as fast, you can get a lot of power plays going. Paladin has some of the best removal as well with Equality Consecration. Um, so I have very high hopes that this card can definitely make a new Arc Paladin Archetypes uh, viable. It might already be a, a very good card in a lot of Paladin index, but it's definitely a card that can also make its own new Healadin Paladin archetype, or at least give it a little bit of a different direction. I'm very, very hyped for this card. I think it's exactly what Paladin needs, and it's an uh, yeah amazing card. Very happy that I could also reveal it myself, of course. As a Paladin control main, uh, I'm gonna make this card work. You can promise on that. And the number one of the expansion is the hero card that came out, Zul'jin. Zildjian, 10 mana uh, with 5 armor, battle cry, cast all spells you have played this game, targets chosen randomly. When, uh, when everybody that of course first see this card, they uh, directly think of Yogg-Saron, but has been one of the most memorable uh, Hearthstone cards that we have ever had around. But Zildjian is a little bit different. Yes, it casts all spells you have, or it, uh, it plays a lot of spells that are casted. But you are able to choose the spells. It is not as random as the target chosen randomly says. Because all spells you have played get replayed. If you play Secrets, if you play Spell Stones, if you play Animal Companion, if you play Unleash the Hound, if you play... What is there all more? The To My Sides, the, all the kind of spells that are just very good in Hunter. They don't, they don't choose anything. They are just very good. Spell Hunter is one of the top tier decks already in Hearthstone. And now with Sul'jin being able to just be a complete refiller for 10 mana, you can, uh, you can get a lot of secrets going, you get a full stack Spellstone back, you can even get Animal Companions, maybe you have some other very beneficial spells in the deck as well. It's an immense value card, it's very comparable to uh, the value that Yogg-Saron and Azoth could, uh, could generate. And I am very convinced that Zildjian is gonna get played in Spell Hunter. It's very limited, maybe, towards a spell oriented deck. Maybe there are some mid range minion decks in that also play like the Spell Stones that wanna play it. But in general, it's definitely a great card in the Spell Hunter deck. It's a 100% guarantee inclusion. Puts uh, the direction, maybe there are a little bit different cards you wanna play here and there now in that archetype. But Zildjian is definitely going to get played. Your hero power becomes uh, all. Your hero power kind of stays the same. Two mana deal to damage. Well, it is actually maybe a nerf because now you can also target You can target your opponent's face, but also minions. But now you have to obviously hover your mouse all over the face for an hunter to deal that two damage. Now, of course, it's a little bit of a better hero power. You can like it's a little bit more flexible, but in general. Um, I am very hyped for Sul'jin, very cool that Blizzard is also continuing with some hero cards. It's definitely gonna get played a lot and I hope, uh, I hope it uh, will also make a little bit more Hunter archetypes there. That was my top 10 guys, let me know what you think, which cards I might have missed that you think are very good, which cards do you agree on and I am very excited for Rusticon's Rumble, it's now here and I'm gonna try to make a lot of new decks. Hope you enjoyed this video guys and hope you have a great rest of your day.